In this video, I'll do the hash rates on the 1660 Super with Micron memory. The last video I did was Hynix, but this is pretty different. So I removed the 3060 out of my test rig through the 1660 Super in, as you can see in uh, the top slot, and I'll get right onto this. So for the Ethereum results, I did get this to 31 mega hash. The best I could do is 81 watts, and that's with a negative core clock of 502. It doesn't really matter. You can go to negative 300, negative 400. I don't find it really does anything beyond that sort of level. Memory clock at 880. I tried 1,000. It crashed. I tried 900. It crashed. I tried 885. It crashed. So 880 on this card is the best it can do, but I'm still pulling 31 mega hash on Ethereum. So it, it's still in the pocket, but it's definitely lower than I would have expected. And perhaps I have drastically lost the silicone lottery on this one. For power, I've cut it down to 65%. And again, once you start cutting power below 65% on this, I find it also starts to drop off on hash rate as well. I just set the fans at 60% and that's just sort of a general rule. So this is the card that I use for video editing. And in fact, it's back into my video editing and my kid's gaming computer now because it's not my favorite mining card. And as it turns out, the 1660 Super is a pretty good card for video editing if that's what you want to do. So for Ravencoin, it does do a lot better. It doesn't have the memory clock issue because obviously I've dropped memory clock to zero. What I found is the card will do 14, 14.1 mega hash, and that's at 124 watts. Core clock 110, I found going above that for core clock doesn't really do too much. I did try it up to 140, but it got the same result, so I just cut it back. For the power, I've got it at 100%, and I had to set the fans at 80% because obviously it's getting a little bit hotter. What I found for core intensive algorithms on the 1660 supers and the TI for that matter is as soon as you start cutting the power, you drastically start cutting your hash rate. I was able to get efficiency quite a bit better at 75 to 80% power. However, that came at a, a loss of about two mega hash. So you're losing in the range of 20% to save that. So depends on your electricity cost. Perhaps you would want to do that and uh, just be advised you'd be at about 12 mega hash and just a little bit under 100 watts. So for Ergo Auto Lycos, exact same settings for this as I used for Ethereum. With the one exception, I found that on Ergo, you can actually drop your power a little bit lower and it doesn't actually affect hash rate. So I've got both the 3060 and 1660 Super on this. The 1660 is the top one and it is pulling 60.4 mega hash at 70 watts, which is pretty decent. Core clock negative 502, memory clock plus 880, power is set to 56% and fan set at 60%. And just like Ethereum, if you push memory clock on this card to 885, it is, it is over. And for the final one on this video is Octopus. It's going to use the exact same settings as Ravencoin because it's core intense again. For the hash rate is it's pretty good for a 1660 28.9 mega hash at 124 watts that's core clock at 110 positive again if you go up it doesn't really do anything memory clock at zero i found adjusting that does almost nothing for the power it is again at 100 percent with a fan speed at 80 percent and just like ravencoin as soon as you start dropping the power for these core intensive algos it does drop pretty quickly and once again right around that 75 to 80 percent you can get sort of a better efficiency but not significantly better. And you do lose, again, 10, 15, 20% on your hash rate. So it really depends on your power limit. But I, I would say you could expect 28.9, 124 watts and giving you an efficiency of about 233 uh, kilohash per watt. Anyway, those are the results I got for a 1660 Super with Micron memory. Thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.